OpenAI O1 Preview is here, and let's see how we can start leveraging it when it comes to prompting and OpenAI. First, I'll go over how to even get access to these new models. Next, I'll go over how we actually prompt with these new models. And finally, what use case these new models even serve in the context of automations, software. What use case do you serve on one preview? What do you serve? Let's jump in. If you've got access to new models in the past when it comes to Anthropic, Google, OpenAI, but I'll be honest with y'all, O1 Preview and O1 Mini are honestly extremely impressive in the context of API and accessing AI and applications. And I'm not saying that to exaggerate. I mean, I'm not paid by OpenAI, y'all. Like, this is just extremely impressive. The best way I can put it is this. Earlier this year, we saw the OpenAI demo when it came to advanced voice mode. You know, the voice mode was like no latency where you could literally just talk to AI and it just talks back like instantly. Like that level of like breakthrough occurring. To be honest with y'all, this is what's kind of occurring here with this new API endpoint, O1 Mini and O1 Preview. The amount of value you can get in an output is astonishing comparative to what we've seen in the past with other models. O1 Preview is like O1 Mini on steroids, but to be honest with you, every single use case I've seen up to the point that I've used personally, you can use O1 Mini and I really like O1 Mini. Therefore, we're gonna use O1 Mini today. I'm gonna give you some context of how to even prompt with this thing, how to access it, et cetera. Let's jump in. First thing, how do we get access? Corbin, I don't have access to this. Where is this? How did you get access to it? To find out if you can even get access to it, go up to your settings. In your settings, go to the section called limits, and then you will see it right up here, usage, tier, whatever. When this first launched, it was only available for tier five. I believe they actually lowered that down to tier four now. Therefore, find the tier that you currently are sitting at, and in order to get a higher tier, you have to basically spend and use more AI within the OpenAI platform. And I think long-term, mid-term, short-term, they'll lower this tier even lower with these endpoints. So don't worry. At a certain point, everyone's going to get access to this. So now that you know how to get access to it, let's understand how we prompt with it. First thing you'll notice is that within an O1 mini prompt, we have no parameters. What do I mean by that? We have O1 Mini selected. If I go to GBT40 Mini, look at that. We have none of this. As the model currently stands, we don't have the ability to affect temperature. This is how consistent the outputs are. Maximum tokens, the outputs and the inputs, the top P frequency penalty, presence penalty. We don't, we don't have the ability to do anything when it comes to the actual lasering in of the model itself. Now in the future, we'll probably get access to these parameters. But to be real with you, this model is so good, we don't even need them. You just need to know how to prompt correctly. So second major thing you'll notice is that there isn't system and user instructions here. Comparative to this, where we have the system instructions here, and then we have the user message there. Let me go ahead and move over, y'all. I already know I'm gonna get that comment. Corbin, you're in the way. I know, I know, I just moved, all right? <laughs> Check out this video right here where I go in depth how to leverage system instructions paired with user message as you do wanna give different information depending whether it's system instructions or the user message. There's actually context here that you need to understand for other models, although, we need to kind of combine these two in the O1 Mini because we don't have system instructions. We just have the message. Therefore, let's do a quick prompt together to understand how we would do this. Where O1 Mini shines is when you provide a lot of complex data or a lot of data and ask for complex outputs. So let's go ahead and do that together. We're gonna to say based on this, and then we're gonna use data found with this income and loss sheet. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this right here. As right now, we can't actually do attachments with O1 Mini beta. So I'm gonna do this semicolon. I'm gonna provide the parentheses here. And then personally, I'm gonna go ahead, jump over here. And I'm gonna copy all this. Command C, B. Okay, so we provided a ton of data here, data. And now we can get to the prompt. Therefore, the way we're gonna structure these prompts is first we're gonna provide the major data that we're inputting into the prompt. If you're not inputting a lot of data, then this doesn't apply. But a lot of times when we're doing this workflow through API, we're inputting some type of data. So whatever the data is, put it at the top. From here, we could just dive in, put one sentence, and then just see a really cool output. But if you wanna get very specific here, let's do that. We're gonna just say input format. I'm gonna put Google Sheet. Now in theory, input format could be anything. Input format is just giving context of the way we've structured and inputted the data. Now probably the more important one here is the output format. Now, this is very important, as this is gonna give you the ability to output from 01, however you want it to output. Do you wanna output it in four paragraphs? Do you wanna output it in three sentences? What do you wanna output, et cetera? So the output format is more specific to the actual structuring of the output format. And let me show you something cool here. We say JSON payload, and we will say, make it an array. And then we're gonna go come back over here. We'll say for gross sales every year. Gross sales every year. Actually, we'll just keep it as a JSON payload, make it an array, because it's the output format. And then we're gonna go ahead and say, generate the gross sales for every year. This can be longer, this can be shorter, but the idea here is to give you context of how to formalize a prompt. Input format, how is it coming in? Output format, how do you want it to come out? And then what do you want? Generate the gross, not the gross, gross sales for every year, hit run. It is thinking. And this right here, 
is what makes this extremely powerful. Let's just go check it real quick. 2027, 47,756. Okay, good. It works. <laughs> it got the correct information. Nice. Beyond that, though, this is the correct information. Look at that. I inputted a ton of data here. I asked for a very specific output, and we got that. We literally got a JSON array of the different years for girl sales. As I referenced earlier, the output format could be anything. I could be like, make a small story that's three paragraphs long about this data. Although this is obviously a lot more applicable to software development and application development. It's a JSON output. This is amazing. Very specific to application development here slash automation development as now we can parse this data reliably for however we want to use it, which is extremely powerful. I'm going to be doing more work when it comes to O1 Mini and O1 Preview and prompting with it more. So I'll probably do an updated version of this video later down the line. So make sure to subscribe for that. I hope you learned something today. Make sure to leave a like. It's completely free. Check out the other prompting video if you want to see how to prompt with other models that have a system instructions and a user instructions as we approach that logic differently. Without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, we got the JSON. We got the JSON. JSON output. It's an array. Those are two random videos. That's my face. The bottom one looks cool. I'll see you in the next video.